Hello, my name is Ludovic, and this talk is called PriFi, Low Latency Anonymity for Organizational Networks. The problem we are interested in solving is of eavesdropping in LANs and WLANs. In these networks, it is fairly easy to observe the traffic, and many entities can do so. Insiders that might be malicious or coerced, malware installed on the endpoints, and possibly outsiders doing a parking lot attack on wireless networks. The traffic is typically encrypted, of course, but that's not always sufficient. And we know there is a plethora of traffic analysis attacks that allows to recover content, for instance, as you can see on the slide with an example with encrypted Skype traffic. And also this kind of attacks allows to fingerprint and track users. And what we are really worried about is the possibility of targeted attacks. The ability for an adversary to answer the question, what is the CEO doing right now? What is this doctor in this hospital uploading now? To protect against this kind of attacks, we have two solutions. In general, VPNs might be a weak solution. They hide the destination, but not the source, so they don't really prevent targeted attacks. And also, it's another endpoint that you need to trust in the sense that if the VPN exits has a malware, then the game is lost as well. In general, the class of tools, which is built to reduce this metadata, such as who's communicating and what is the communicated content, is anonymous communication networks, or ACNs. However, ACNs typically are made for the internet and they are not really tailored for an organization. In particular, one common drawback that they have is to produce the anonymous output, they need a sequential operation done by multiple servers to produce the output. Think of what mixed networks do, for instance. Also, typically the servers are considered in the antitrust model and they should be in different jurisdictions to enhance uh, and maximize collective trustworthiness. So in practice, it means that possibly your traffic is bouncing across the planet. And of course, this adds latency. Also, in the context of an organization, it means that traffic from the organization to the same organization might now, leave, might now need to leave the organization, bounce over the planet before coming back in. So this clearly seems to be a suboptimal. There is another anonymity construction which might be uh, helpful here, and it's Dining Cryptographer Networks or DCNets. I just have one slide of background on DCNet to make sure we are all on the same page. A DCNet is a multi-party protocol to communicate anonymously. First, participants exchange pairwise shared secrets, so those are the values in red. Then everybody computes the sum of their secrets, those are the values in green. And in addition, one participant can add her message to the sum. So Alice adds her blue message to the sum. Then by collecting the public output, one can recover the anonymous message by summing everything. You realize that all the uh, shared secrets cancel out. And also all the contributions have the same length and are indistinguishable from random bits. So this construction provides information theoretic anonymity. So with DCNet, there is no sequential operation done by multiple servers. Participants compute something locally, and then from their output, you can directly derive the anonymous output. This means that in theory, if we were to deploy a DCNet in an organization, we wouldn't need to use servers, and we wouldn't need to route the packets over the internet. So we would avoid this annoying latency increase that you could see with the MixNet, for instance. Of course, DCNets in general have problems too. They use a lot of bandwidth. Uh, they need a special way of dealing with the malicious insiders. More on this in a few slides. They need a way to handle churn. They're fairly fragile in terms of churn. So when someone leaves the network, you need to re-exchange all the shared secrets. And this scales poorly with the number of clients in N squared. So all in all, in fact, and this was one contribution by uh, Descent in Numbers in 2012, well, we do need still servers to handle these points more efficiently. And in fact, if you try to deploy decent numbers or similar systems in organizational networks, they are fairly slow. Their latency is in tens of seconds. And so this is due because we have those servers. And to produce an anonymous output, there is a lot of chit chat between the servers to ensure integrity, to handle churn, and so on. So at least theoretically, in this setting, the theoretical appeal of DCNet has not been achieved yet. So that's PriFi. It's a DCNet-based ACN, Anonymous Communication Network, for organizational networks. And it focuses on having a low latency. Here's our system model. We have clients inside an organization. 
and they are connected to the internet through a relay or a router, so that's typically already part of the infrastructure. We have servers that are spread across the planet in different jurisdictions, so in general the, the latency to these servers is going to be high. In our threat model, we consider a global passive adversary. The servers are in the antitrust model, so one of them is, at least one of them is honest, but we don't need to know which one, and they are all highly available. The clients and the uh, relay are malicious, but we need, as always, at least two honest clients. And the relay is going to be trusted for availability. So we need him to faithfully forward messages due to its position in the network. It's fairly clear that if it decides to drop all messages, then there is not much that we can do. But if he is fully malicious, then only availability suffers. So just to recap, what we are trying to do is to protect against an eavesdropper in an organizational network. So we are building anonymous channels between the clients and the relay so that the adversary cannot tell who is communicating. Also in this work, we are interested in hiding who is communicating and not really what is being sent. So this is fairly orthogonal to the design and it could be fixed with appropriate padding. So here's a Stroman version of the protocol. The setup has two parts. First, we derive shared secrets between each pair of client and server. Then we organize the clients in a secret permutation and secret ordering to decide who communicates when. And this is done with an F shuffle in our case. Then to anonymize, we do as follows. On the way upstream, we use a client-server DC net between the clients and the servers. So this is like distance in numbers, but we change the place where the decoding happens. Now it happens at the relay, which is inside the organization. We also remove all client to server and server to server communication. More on this in a slide, but in essence, this is a DC net with a new topology. Then to finish the communication, the relay decodes the anonymous message and simply performs network address translation like it used to do. So out of the box, we support most IP traffic. On the path downstream, the relay broadcasts the message to all the clients, which is typically a very costly construction, but it turns out that in organizational networks, it is not so much. The relay just sends a few messages, which are replicated by layer two equipment like switches and so on. And if we are talking about a wireless LAN, we get receiver anonymity for, for free. The relay just sends one message, which is simply heard by all the clients. Just to go back to a few key aspects of this simple sermon. So the client's data do not go through the servers. And in fact, they remain on their usual network path. So this means that the added latency due to, uh, to the anonymization is due to waiting between the clients and software processing, but not because we add extra links. We still have servers, like in the related work, and their latency is still considered to be high because they might be spread out across the planet. However, in Prify, this latency matters only at setup. So the trick here is that the contribution of the servers is independent of the communicated content, and so it can be sent in advance to the relay. When a particular round needs a particular contribution from the servers, typically it is already at the relay, ready to be used in the DC net, and there is no need to contact the servers at this time. In practice, if there is enough throughput between the servers and the relay, it means that simply the latency to the servers do not matter. And also, as mentioned, uh, we have very cheap receiver anonymity in this setup. So this Strowman has two main limitations. The first is disruption attacks. So, so malicious insiders can flip bits inside the network and jam the output. I don't have time to present the full solution here. Essentially, you have two ways of dealing with the problem. The first is to use proactively ver verifiable DC nets, like Verdict. So here, the DC net ciphertext are group elements, and you can apply standard proof techniques on them to prove that what you send is correct. So this works, but in essence, it slows down all the network for normal operations. What we propose instead is a new, fast and retroactive way of detecting disruptors. So we keep the classic XOR-based DC net, which uh, do not use group elements, to keep the normal operation as fast as possible, 
and then we only spend resources when uh, there is a disruption to detect who did the disruption. The second problem I want to talk about is equivocation attacks. Essentially, this is an attack from a malicious relay um, poisoning the information of the client. So while this applies to our stroming, we note that actually it also applies to other dissident systems like descent, descent in numbers and verdict, and um, they uh, do not address the attack. So this attack works as follows. Um, we have a relay and an anonymous channel, and first the relay decodes an anonymous message uh, that queries, for instance, for uh, Google's IP address. Instead of broadcasting the results to all the clients, uh, the relay sends a different answer to each client. So this is the poisoning I mentioned. And then in the second step, the relay decodes a perfectly anonymous request to the first IP address. At this point, of course, the relay can tell that the anonymous client doing the request is client 1, simply because client 2 did not receive the information about uh, this IP address. I want to note as well that this attack works, of course, on unencrypted traffic, DNS traffic, like it is the case here, but it would also work if the traffic is encrypted and the relay colludes with the endpoint contacted by the client. One possible scenario would be if you consider a news organization where both the relay and some external service like WikiLeaks would collude, then the attack would work. So a straightforward solution to the problem would be to have some kind of gossiping or consensus between the client. However, as we know, this is fairly costly in terms of latency and bandwidth. And in particular, clients cannot use the received information before the consensus is finished. Otherwise, there is a risk. So instead, we solve the problem in this way. We add a layer of encryption to the upstream messages. The key depends on the client's view of the history of the downstream messages. The relay can decode if and only if all the honest clients share the same history. So crucially, this is achieved without any communication between the clients, which would be costly and scale poorly. Also, we need to include um, the servers in this computation. Uh, you can realize that the relay knows both the correct and the wrong history, so we need to include somehow the shared secrets of the DCNet. And here the key, of course, is to have this contribution to be also independent on the communicated content. So we can reuse the trick that we had before to negate the high latency links between the relay and the servers. Also, there is an interaction between the disruption protection protocol and this protocol. What happens if a client cheats in this part? So we extend the previous protocol. In this case, it's fairly straightforward in the sense that what needs to be proven correct is short. So we map it to a group element and we use standard techniques. But so detecting this rupture is still retroactive in this case. And as before, uh, the performance loss only happens in case of disruption. All in all, to sum up the past four points, uh, this extra protection has no negative effect on the latency. It uses, it, it uses a little bit of bandwidth, but there is no extra message. So we evaluate this protocol on the topology similar to an organizational network. We have an organization with 100 clients, 100 megabit per second links, and 10 milliseconds latency. Outside of the organization, we have three servers uh, with 10 megabit per second links and 100 milliseconds latency. So I will refer you to the paper for the full evaluation. Uh, let's see here three main takeaways. So first, an evaluation of the latency and the bandwidth with a data set from Crowdad containing Skype traffic. Then we have an evaluation with the real data set that we collected over three months in a real facility. And finally, I will uh, show you a comparison with the related work. So let's start with the Skype dataset. On the x-axis, you see the number of clients. On the y-axis, you see the added latency when the clients are in an active Skype conversation through Wi-Fi. You see that the added latency is between 20 and 150 milliseconds. The behavior is fairly linear, and we see also that the current implementation starts to struggle at 100 clients. But in general, uh, the latency is low enough to support uh, voice over IP. So this is the same experiment, but we now show the bandwidth usage. 
For each number of clients, you see three columns. The first is about the payload, and then we have the bandwidth used inside and outside of the LAN. Inside the LAN, we use roughly speaking up to 50 megabits per second, and it's fairly constant. And outside of the LAN, it starts at 10 megabits per second and goes down to one. So the slowdown is due because with an increasing number of clients, we spend more time waiting for all the ciphertext and all the contributions, and there is simply more jitter on the network. In the paper, we show how pipelining the messages can help a little bit. In this uh, second experiment, we collected three months of real traces in an ICRC facility. So this is a possible deployment for PrimePy. We then select 10 random one hour periods during active periods of the week. So we exclude weekends and nights. And then we replay all those traces for PrimePy. The important part here is that each client replays its own traffic that it did have during this, this period. And when we, are, we do not have enough clients, we had extra clients to match the desired anonymity set size. You see that the behavior is fairly similar as with what we saw in the Skype experiment. The takeaway here is that for modest to small organizations, so stop up to 100 clients, even when you pipe all the traffic to PriFi, the added latency is fairly modest. The final point of comparison that I want to show you is with the related work. What you see with the red and orange lines is the latency that you get when you blindly apply decent systems like decent in numbers to an organization. As I already mentioned, due to the chit chat between the servers, this latency is fairly high. What you see in blue is the latency achieved with PriFi, and this shows that the redesign of the protocol did have an effect, because for the same guarantees, we gain roughly two orders of magnitudes in terms of latency. Of course, this is critical because it means that now PriFi can, can handle even latency sensitive traffic such as voice over IP. So in conclusion, we saw PriFi, which is a new architecture for DC net in organizational networks. It has similar guarantees as the related work, stronger guarantees if you consider the equivocation problem, and at the same time, it has a much lower latency. It is designed to be traffic agnostic and to support most protocol. And we saw that you can pipe via IP traffic or latency sensitive traffic on top of it, and the added latency is fairly small. Also in this presentation, I only sketched them, but in the paper, we present two new low latency solutions for the disruption and equivocation problems in DC nets. I want to thank you for your attention and I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you.